Happy Monday, fifth grade. This is Miss Gibson coming to you with your reading for today. So you guys should, of course, be on Monday, June fifteenth. You guys should be should have the text out. We're starting on page one hundred and forty, and then of course having the reading stop and jots out. So go ahead and get all three of these links out before we begin um, our class for today. All right, so we are about to finish up the book for today. So we're going to get into the second half of chapter 19 and finish up together. And of course, this is beginning on page 140. Now, as we know, Bud has found out that Herman E. Calloway is his is actually his grandfather and not his father. So we just found out the resolution last class of um, her, uh, Bud's problem. So now it's time to see how Herman E. Calloway is feeling based off the interactions he's having as we end the book. So just as a recap question, how is Herman E. Calloway handling the news about who Bud actually is? Right. He is very emotional right now. He locked himself in a room. He doesn't know how to take it. So let's get into the chapter and finish off today and figure out what's going on next. So we're going to begin with reading um, the first page together. And then after that, um, you guys are going to get into the first stop and job showing your understanding of how Miss Thomas and Hermione Calloway feel about the news that just dawned on them in comparison to how Bud felt four years ago. So this is connected to our teaching point because we are trying to understand characters better through these interactions. So let's read page 140 together. And then after that, you guys are going to get into the first stop and drop. All right. So you can remember how bad you felt when, for, when you first knew she was gone, can't you? Yes, ma'am, because it still feels the same. Well, you've had four years to, to heal that scar, but it still hurts some of the time, doesn't it? Sometimes a lot. I know, bud, but remember, your grandfather and I just found out that she passed. The hurt is brand new for us, Miss Thomas started swallowing. And even though he hasn't seen her in 11 years, I know there isn't a day that goes by that he doesn't think about her. He never admitted, but there isn't one show that he, we give that he doesn't first look out into the audience, not to see how big the crowd is, but hoping that she'll be out there. Hoping that she, she'd have seen a flyer tacked to a telephone pole somewhere and would stop by to see him. He loved her so much, but sorry, sweetheart. She took the hand she wasn't squeezing my fingers with and took out a handkerchief and blew her nose. Those stones that he picks up everywhere he performs are for her. She must have been four or five years old. The band was getting ready to travel to Chicago for a week. and Before we left, he asked her what she wanted him to bring back for her. He was thinking a doll or a dress or something, but she told him, a walk, daddy. Please bring me back a walk from Chicago. So everywhere we went after that, he'd have to get her a walk. We'd write the city and the day we were there on them for her. He's got boxes of them upstairs, 11 years worth. Oh, bud, I don't know how Herman is going to be feeling after this. That's where I need your help. You've got to remember that both Herman and I love your mother just as much as you do. This didn't seem like it could be true, not just because it didn't seem like anyone could love my mother as much as I do, but because it didn't seem like Herman E. Calloway could love anyone at all. Miss Thomas said, so if you can remember, bud, be patient with him. That or ornery old man upstairs is very, very hurt right now, and I just can't say where he's going to land after this news gets through blowing him around. Miss Thomas was starting to do that stingy eyed blinking. Okay. Now you guys are going to get into that first stop and jive. So explain why Miss Thomas says the hurt is brand new for us in regards to her and Herman after Bud tells them about his mother. Go ahead and pause the video and get started. All right, welcome back from doing that first stop and job of explaining why Miss Thomas says the hurt is brand new for us in regards to her and Herman after Bud tells them about his mother. So 
we know that the hurt has always been there for Bud, but now we know that it's brand new for Miss Thomas and Hermione Calloway because they just found out that she passed. Okay. So they just found out she passed. This isn't something that they knew this whole entire time because she wasn't around. But now that they actually know who Bud is and realize who the mom is, it just dawned on them and pains them that she's actually gone and not coming back to see her father. All right. So now that we've gone through that, you guys are going to independently read pages 141 to 142, then get into the second stop and jot. So make sure you are again reading 141 to the bottom of 142 and then stop and then get into the second stop and jot on the exit tick on the stop and jot page. Go ahead and pause the video and get started. All right, welcome back from doing stop and job number two, which was why did Bud receive the saxophone and how does he feel? So Bud clearly is receiving this saxophone from the band members and he is feeling so excited. So, he knows that now he is um, he's getting this um, good, great gift, and he is so excited. He says at the end, I looked at my bandmates and said, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I'll practice on this so much that I'll be just as good as you guys are in about three weeks. So realize he is now still feeling a part of this band and a part of the family other than what's going on with his now grandfather and Miss Thomas. So he's very excited about what's going on in his life. Okay, now let's get into pages 143 to 144. You guys are again going to get into these pages independently and read. And then you guys are going to get into the third stop and jot of explaining how Bud feels about being in the house and giving specific items to Hermione Calloway. So you guys should be able to explain the significance of this and why Bud felt the need to give them to him as you're reading. So as you're reading, think of the significance behind Bud giving Herman specific items he's had. Of course, you guys are going to find out about the items as you guys read page 143 to the bottom of 144. Make sure you are being specific with naming the items in Stop and Jot 3. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and get started. All right, welcome back again from reading these pages, 143 to 144, and then understanding the significance behind Bud giving Herman those specific uh, items back. So what were those items he gave to Herman E. Calloway? He gave him the rocks and the flyers that he was carrying around for all of these years since his mom died. Why do you guys think he's giving them back to him after he's looking through his stuff? Right. So on page 144, it says, Woo, even though it was me who carried them around for all these years, you'd have to be a pretty big liar if you say those rocks and flyers really belong to me. Herman E. Calloway's name was all over the flyers and his writing was all over the rocks. Besides, the way he looked so shook up when he saw those rocks for the first time, I figured they meant more to him than they did to me anyway. So now that Bud is figuring out what the rocks actually meant, what the numbers were, what um, and the significance behind those rocks, he feels like it is important for Herman E. Calloway to keep them since it shows where those shows were. And he was actually having those rocks because those are the rocks that he was giving his own daughter to let her know, let him know where he was traveling at and what day. So Bud felt the need to give them back to Herman E. Calloway because he knew that they were more important to him and the significance and the meaning was bigger to him than it was to Bud because Bud just carried them always, you know, just to keep his mom in his spirits. Okay, so now we're going to finish the chapter together and then you guys will complete the last stop and jot. So you guys are going to end with the last stop and jot of showing your understanding of how Bud has basically grown as a character over the search of figuring out who Harmony Calloway is. 
Many doors have opened and closed in his life since his mother passed, and it's now our job to show our understanding of what he means in this final scene. So let's get into the remaining parts of the chapter together. I poked the thumbtack into the top of Mama's picture and walked to the wall that she stuck all the pictures of horses on. I put Mama right amongst all those ponies and horses she liked so much. I didn't need to carry that doggone picture around. This wasn't how I remember Mama anyway. Mama was always excited and jumpy, not sad and pokey like this little girl. Mama was kind of old when I met her too. She wasn't young like this picture at all. The picture looked like it belonged. It's strange the way things turn out. Here I'd been carrying Mama around for all this time and I finally put her somewhere where she wanted to be. Back in her own bedroom back, back amongst all her horses. I went back to the bed and picked the flint rock up. It was going to be enough. I didn't need those other things with me all the time. I didn't need them to remind me of Mama. I couldn't think about her anymore if there were a hundred hours in every day and a thousand days in every week. I could think of my mama any better than I already do. All I have to do is remember her hand on my forehead when she'd ask me something like, baby, are you sick? Have you got a temperature? All I have to do is remember mama letting me dry the dishes after she'd washed them. How she used to say no one in the world could dry a plate all plate the way I could. All I have to do is take two or three deep breaths and think of all the books she'd read to me at night and remember that no matter how long it took, she'd read until I went to sleep. Desmond Malone was right. I was carrying mama inside, inside me and there wasn't anyone or anything that could take away from that or add to it either. The one rock from Flint would be enough. I set it in my sax case. I picked up my saxophone. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I wet the reed the same way I'd seen Steady Eddie do, then clamped it on the mouthpiece. I closed my eyes and counted to 10. If, I, if after I got to 10, I blew the horn and it sounded pretty good, I knew I'd be playing along with the dusky devastators of the depression in a week or two. If I didn't sound so good, it meant I'd have to practice for a couple of months before I'd be good enough to get on stage with them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I puffed my cheeks and blew as hard as I could. The saxophone only squeaked, squawked, and groaned, and then sounded like it was making up words like a rock, rozuga, balupa. Shucks, maybe I didn't puff my cheeks out right. Maybe I was blowing too hard. I counted again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This time, the horn only squeaked, squawked, and groaned. It didn't sound like it was trying to make up any words. It sounded great. It was perfect, like when Steady blew it, but I could tell that one day was going to be. Something told me I could learn how to play this. Something told me that those sounds were more than just bad notes. If you didn't have a, have a real good imagination, you'd probably think those noises were the sounds of some kid blowing a horn for the first time. But I knew better than that. I could tell those words those were the squeaks and squawks of one door open close sorry i could tell those were the squeaks and squawks of one door closing and another one opening i looked at the picture of mama that miss thomas gave me mama was looking right at me with that same soft smile i know it's stupid to smile back at a picture but i couldn't help myself i know it's even stupider to talk to a picture especially when it hadn't seen anything to start a conversation but i had to say here we go again mama only this time i can't wait I closed my eyes and began practicing. Chucks, as good as things were going for me now, I bet you dollars to donuts that Steady Eddie was going to get here early. All right, so now you guys are going to finish off with the last stop and jot of explain why Bud says that the squeaks and squawks of his saxophone were the closing of one door and the opening of another. What does this mean to him? Why is he thinking and saying this as he's playing the saxophone? How is he ending off in this chapter? Once you guys are done, you guys are going to get into that exit ticket for today. Your word is summer because we're about to start summer vacation. So I hope you guys finish off today strong with your reading. Get 100 on that exit ticket. Use a text to guide you. And don't forget to do that last stop and jot of showing what this means for Bud in this moment, as especially as a character for him. 
So go ahead and get started on that and have a great rest of your day. Bye.